recovery after the pandemic be different from the financial crisis of 1997 and 2008? The recovery will be dependent on the type of crisis that we are experiencing. Now, as many people will say, every crisis is very different. At uh, kung talagang pinatakot at pinapakabaka ng mga tao, sasabihin nila, iba talaga to, unprecedented ito. I agree. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's, it's going to be much the same as the other crisis. But let me tell you, lahat naman yan unique eh. Lahat naman yan pinagdaanan natin. So, let us study and move closer to what the experiences are. So I'll just compare the current crisis that we're experiencing to the past three other crises that we've gone through. Now, I guess many of you would know, I've been in this market for the longest time, so um, napagdaanan na natin yung ibang crisis na yan, in fact, even earlier than this. We're experiencing a downward trend in this COVID-19 pandemic down 39% if you're going to be looking at it from 2018. But if you're going to be looking at it just from the late 2019 to today, minus 33%. As we say that, this has been the fastest drop ever. You know, in one month, you know, you've seen values really erased. Okay? How far is that going to go? How quick that's going to recover? Let us compare to the others so that we'll know the answer. Okay? Alam niyo, ang pinaka-quick na recovery was 2008. What is that crisis? That is the U.S. financial crisis that became a global financial crisis. Kung natatandaan niyo, yan yung tinatawag nating uh, U.S. subprime crisis. Yan yung topic nung The Big Short na sine. Natatandaan niyo yun. Uh, dyan nahulog ang Lehman Brothers. Doon sa marami nating colleagues sa Film Life. Diyan nahulog ang AAA rated company na ating mother company, AIG. Okay? So, that was a big drop. But the Philippines recovered immediately afterwards. In fact, it didn't take over a year before we, you know, from a downward movement of 51%, we recovered more than 51% in less than a year. Before that was a longer crisis. The longer crisis was what we call the Asian financial crisis. Mas malaki ang tama sa atin, 65%. At nagkaroon ng debt cut bounce, kagaya ngayon, parang bumawi. Pero hindi tumagal, bumaba uli. So naging minus 71 pa siya over time. Five years bago talaga nag-recover. Five years bago bumalik. Okay? Now, before that is another, is another crisis. And it's the political crisis of the Philippines. After 1986, when we installed Cory to power, Diba? Ito yung sunod-sunod na coup attempts. Sunod-sunod ito, Cagayan siege by Aguinaldo, the, the Sambuanga siege, puro siege. And the biggest, most bloody coup which ended more than 99 lives, I heard. Diba? So yan yung sunod-sunod na uh, pagtama sa gobyerno. And before that gets solved, another two years. So makikita nyo, may tumagal, may intermediate, may sobrang bilis. Bakit? So why are these crises like that. So I want to be able to compare it. Tingnan natin kung ano talaga yung crooks or ano yung descriptions ko dun sa crisis na yun. If you remember, 1989 to 1990, it's political instability and the coup attempts. So anong situation? It's a localized country risk position. Pilipinas lang ang may problema, walang problema yung iba. Tayo lang. Okay? Political, unstable government. di ba? Si Cory naka-install pero sila Enrile, kumontra na sa kanya, sila Gringo Honasan. We have a very unstable economy. Why? We just came out of the martial law years. 1986 pa lang, hindi pa tayo nakakapag-build up ng structure. The government has a very, very low capability to respond. So ano nangyari? Medyo tumagal pero na-recover natin ng konti. Most especially when Ramos got elected and we got ourselves into a more structural approach to solving the issue. Kasi alam niyo yung problema ng isang country, especially like the Philippines, pag walang foreign investment, hindi talaga aakyat eh. Matatagal lang umakyat ang market. So syempre, localized country risk, bet ako pupunta sa Pilipinas when there's Thailand, there's Hong Kong, there's Singapore. Huwag na muna tayong tumingin sa Pilipinas. Let them fix their, their house before we get there. Bad economic structure, Bad political structure. 
And that's the reason why it took a bit of time. 1987 was worse. It's not localized, it was regional. So it's a regional financial crisis in the Philippine financial crisis, Asian financial crisis. Ang tinamaan, real property, real estate values, banks that are not exactly capitalized, nag-collapse ang mga banko, nag-collapse ang mga property companies, hindi natuloy ang mga project, right? Risk management concerns. So ang sagot dyan dapat, structural talaga, which means getting your banks to recapitalize, solving issues with regard to um, funding when it comes to these other big, uh, big, big companies. But ang naging problema, while nagre-recover ka na, medyo nasundan yan. Nailect si Erop noong 1998. 1998, Erop became president. Again, obviously, walang masyadong confidence in government. So medyo sumadsad na naman. Diba? You know, there was a, a, a move to, you know, Edsa Dos to, to take Erop out. So anong nangyari? 1997, tumagal talaga. Kasi, again, dalawa na namang combination of problems. Political and economic. With economic being pushed by structural. But it's a bigger problem because it's regional. Okay? Now, we move on to the 2008 crisis. Yung best performing you know, market in terms of a recovery. Mabilis, V-shaped. Bakit nagkaganon? Kasi US subprime crisis yun, di ba? A collapse of the US housing market. Napanood nyo yan sa sine, big short. Lehman Brothers, hulo. AIG, hulo. Alam nyo ba, out of the 10 top banks of the US, pito ang nahulog. Okay? So, that just tells you, in terms of the government response, and I remember this, I made a presentation to, uh, to a lot of people regarding AIG at that time. Yung stimulus package to uh, bail out, you know, they call the word bail out, the big companies were more than enough to buy 200 BPIs. I always remember that presentation. 200 na BPI ang binigay ng US government to bail out the big companies. Okay? Ganong kabigat. But, bakit okay for the Philippines? Kasi ang naging apektado, Middle East and then Europe. Ang Asia hindi masyado. Why? Di ba galing na tayo sa 1997 crisis? In this particular crisis, we got the lesson earlier than the United States. At that time, our banks were well capitalized. Our structure was good. Walang tumaob na developer. Walang hindi nakatapos ng project. Real estate prices held up kasi hindi na sila as leveraged as they were in 1997. Diba? So, we had a more structural, structurally sound financial market in 2008. Now, this is the key. Habang nagre-recover yung 2008 with 2009 and 2010, Na-elect pa si Pinoy. With nadaan, you know, we're gonna be better. Siyempre, our reputation outside was good. And that's the reason why people went to the Philippines, invested in the Philippines, and that's why that's a V-shaped recovery. Less than a year, we recovered what slide we experienced. Makikita nyo, ano ba tong 2019-2020? Okay? It's a global concern. So hindi lang yan, Asia, hindi lang yan the Western world, it's global. The worst is, it's not financial. Lahat ng nakita natin, political and financial eh. Ngayon hindi. Total economies, total consumption. Everyone is on lockdowns and shutdowns. The world economy is put to a halt. You know, there was a question raised earlier. Hindi ba apektado yung mga OFW? Yes, it's going to be, you know, these guys are going to be affected. Because as the world economy slows down, they might, need, they might not need as much many workers that are there. So there would be an issue with that. So consumption is going to be uh, contracting. And in fact, ang pinakamahirap for some industries, they're not even contracting. They're zero. You know, they are zero. So both consumer and financial impact. So then you pa ng employment and consumption. Diba? Kulang na kulang yung consumption necessities lang ang kinukonsume. Bibili pa ba kayo ng bagong damit? Bibili pa ba kayo ng bagong sapatos? E chinelas lang lahat ng ginagamit nyo. Di ba? <laughs> Hindi ka lalabas eh. So, kailan ka bibili ng bagong sapatos? Di ba? 
kailan mo mapupudpud ngayon yung mga sapatos mo? So, all of those are issues. Now, oil plunges. Can you imagine, have you ever thought about oil being priced negatively? Ano sinasabi ng mga tao? Di ba? Kunin nyo na lang kahit libre. In fact, pwede namin kayong bayaran para kunin nyo. Ganun ang presyo ng oil ngayon. Now, travel and tourism will take so much time before it bounces back. So talagang may issue tayo sa economy. This is going to be unprecedented. This is going to be big. However, sabi ko nga, lagi tayong titingin anong flip side nito. Anong situation ng Philippines? We still have good economic fundamentals, guys. We have to have, you know, that realization that our demographic, you know, variable is still a big plus. We're very young. We're uh, average age 23, mean age 24. Okay? Then, isa ko pang masasabi, ibang iba rin yung situation ng government natin ngayon. Hindi siya kagaya nung 2008, hindi siya kagaya nung 1997. Structurally, it's very strong. We have a very good budget and if this is handled well, we can be doing a lot of these market and fiscal easing, uh, accommodative policies, and a very, very good stimulus package. How I compare 2020 to 2008? Philippine government, Philippine government capability. Okay? S&P rating natin. 2009, 2008, BB minus. Ngayon, we're BBB plus, which is one grade below A. That's a very big jump. That will give you capability to borrow over 7% of your GDP at a lower price. We are ahead of many companies and countries because of that. GDP per capita. Per capita GDP in 2009, 5,300. Today, GDP, almost $8,000. Okay? Government debt to GDP, 55% in 2009. 42% today. So we have muscle and we can use this muscle. Unemployment rate, 7.5 versus 5.3. Although mas malaki problema natin ngayon dahil baka pati yung OFW, especially yung mga nasa you know, Marines, cruise ships, yan ang pinakamalaking problema natin. Siyempre, it will take a lot of time for the cruise ships to get out again. So that will increase our level of unemployment. Ease of doing business, Ranking, in 2009, we were number 144. Our ranking now is 95. We're on the top 100 worldwide. And then lastly, ito para sa akin ang bigat nito. Pinakamalaki sa lahat. Okay? Gross International Reserve. Didn't you notice, kahit ang sama ng economy, ang sama ng markets, yung dollar hindi umaakyat. Nung 97, nung 2008, lalo na nung 1989, yung dollar exchange rate, talagang pag pumalo yan, sobrang laki. Why? Because we have great gross international reserves. Ang gross international reserves natin noong 2009, 44, okay, billion US dollars. 44. Magkano yung foreign exchange reserves natin ngayon? Double, 88 billion dollars. So we have an arsenal. We have the ammunition. Ang usapan na lang, how are we going to be dealing with this In giving out this stimulus and employment package, maybe because of the the grave problem of the economic situation, I don't expect that to be a V like 2008. Maybe it's more of a U. But when that U happens and it goes up, dere dere chyan, kasi malakas yung ammunition mo, may balak ka, okay? So. In, in effect, what I'm telling you is the recovery is a function of how we're going to act. It's not just on how things are and how things will be, but how we're going to act upon it.